Welcome to Up The Villa podcast and welcome to our Europa Conference League content. Hopefully it's going to be going on for some time. Uh, it feels different talking about a different version of Aston Villa now, but Aston Villa have got Hibernian Hibs on Wednesday, 5.45. Uh, it is going to be on BBC, so I think you can watch it on the iPlayer or your BBC app on your TV, and it's going to be on the BBC Scotland channel. I am certain that's why I've heard it's going to be fo- uh, played on. So uh, if anyone's wondering where they can watch it, that's where they played their last two games as well. So um, it should be on that channel. So Hibs v Aston Villa, really looking forward to it. Feels like we've just got to get this one out of the way and then we can focus on the main bulk of the Europa Conference League. I'm really excited. I think when I actually watch the game, I'm going to feel pretty bit different, really, because European football hits differently. Uh, so it is going to feel for that second a little bit strange and surreal that we're back in Europe. But then we move on and, uh, you know, we'll be playing them away. So, like I say, really looking forward to it. I think it enables us to sort of turn our attention to something else that is quite important. Normally, it's like Premier League, League Cup, FA Cup, that's it. Whereas now we can really look at this European campaign with excitement. So, Justin, how are you feeling, mate? Yes, looking forward to this. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it, this one? Um, yeah, I remember the old European days and they are fantastic nights at Villa Park and, and you know, week on Thursday, I think, at Villa Park will be a special night with the return of European football. But I think we've got to concentrate very, very uh, wholeheartedly on this first leg. You know, it's going to be an entry for, for us uh, into this competition and, it, and in a hugely important two-legged affair to get us through to the main part of, of the Europa Conference League. So we can't take it lightly. I think we've got to go fairly strong. You know, obviously we've got one or two niggles here and there, but I think overall it's got to be a pretty strong team we put out. You know, you can make changes later on if it's going really well. But we don't want any banana skins, do not do we? We know what happened in the third round of the FA Cup last year when disaster struck um so we don't want any of that this time we want a good professional uh performance in the first leg uh hopefully you know ideally we want to take a lead back to villa park but we don't want to be behind i don't think um you know the, the scottish league is barring the top probably two sides is, is pretty average if i want to say that i'm, I'm hope i'm not you know disregarding them too much but it's not one of the strongest leagues in Europe so we should get through this tie pretty comfortably uh, famous last words obviously but mm-hmm. yeah we've got to you know let's not concentrate too much on what comes after let's get this tie done and out the way first you know a comfortable hopefully first leg if we can knock it out then that will take the pressure off the home leg and allow us to maybe rest one or two next week but let's get the first leg out the way first great to see us in Europe and I can't wait to watch it to be fair Yes, you've kind of touched on two points that I've got jotted down here that I want to talk about. Great minds. Like, how, like, number one, I've wrote down, like, how important is this game? And it's quite important because Massive. if we win the game, we then go into the group stage of the Europa Conference League, which is what we all want to do. And that's the achievement and the reward from last season, you know, qualifying for Europe, qualifying in seventh place, that whole season, that whole 38 games was for this moment that we are playing in this week and to try and get into that group stage. So we've worked really hard to get to that stage last season under Unai Emery. Um, So I think it's very, very important. I think, I actually think, and I know a lot of fans, there's some fans that really sort of like bring that FA Cup game up still. And it's the sense of, I think it made Unai even more focused on the Cups. I think I think it kind of gave him a bit of a, not a wake-up call, but like we've got to take things serious. We can't just 
go in half-hearted and, and not have the right intensity. And I think that's one thing that he'll probably have learned. And hopefully that type of performance never, ever happens again. But, you know, we, we have to kind of talk a bit differently now as well, which is my next point. And it's that it's the fact that normally <laughs> as fans, we get so focused on like just looking at the game that's coming up because that's all we've all we've got. You know, we look at we normally be looking at Burnley, focus on Burnley, create loads of content and turn our attention. But you have to talk about it a bit differently because if we win this game, it sets us up so well for the next game at Villa Park. And I yeah. think like thinking differently about these games now, like a game away from home. What do you want to do? Don't lose. If you can win, take a win back to Villa Park, which makes Villa Park even should be an even easier game technically if you if you're going in with a lead. So, you know, you know how our form is at the minute at home, eight Premier League wins in a row, the highest um we've ever done in the Premier League era. It's it's gonna be very difficult for any team to come to Villa Park this season anyway. So I think that whole sort of like you want to bring something back to Villa Park is something a bit a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we've got a pretty, you know, he's made his name on, on cup competitions, hasn't he, you know, and especially uh, European cup competitions. So he, he's well averse to how to attack these games. And, and two-legged games, obviously, we haven't seen many two-legged games for a long time uh, at Villa Park. So you have got a box clever and it does, I suppose, in a way, give you a, a you know, maybe not this game, but going further forward, if we get to the knockout stages, you know, it gives you that little bit of a, a, a sort of, a get out of jail card if you have an absolute stinker in a game, but um, yeah, we, you just got to be very um, professional in each of these games. I think set the stall out to be hard to beat, which we do anyway. Retain the ball, try and nick a goal on the break. You know, I, I, I'd be fairly confident we can go to Hibs and hopefully win there, uh, but I don't think it'd be the end of the world if we drew up there. To be honest, you know, they're going to be well up for it. England Scotland game, you know, uh, you know their fans are going to be baying for blood. The John McGinn factor in going back up there will ignite a few passions, no doubt. So I think, you know, the manager will know exactly what, what, what we have to do. We don't have to win it in the first leg. You know, you're going to win 6 0. And if, if you don't, if you draw the game or, you know, God forbid we lost by the odd goal and they had an absolute steam and we just had a bit of an off day, then you've still got the second leg at home to come, which is the advantage of playing the second leg at home. Uh, but I'm very confident we can we can go up there and put in a very good performance and uh, hopefully maybe not seal the tie in the first leg, but hopefully give us a, a, a good enough cushion to come back and not be too concerned with the second leg. Yeah, so we're going to touch on Hibs in a second, but I wanted to bring a different vibe to this first one. And I asked our members, uh, so shout out to all the members that got involved, and I asked them what their fondest European memories were. And we've had some absolute cracking ones. Um, and they've seen a lot more than I have in my Villa lifetime. So we're, we're going to read a few of them out. Um, well, I'll try and read all of them out. There's, there are quite a few. Um, so we'll go with a couple uh, to start with. So that night, Inter Milan was such a special atmosphere and result. Um Phillips put my first European game against Rapid Vienna at Villa Park 2009-ish, I think, even though we lost amazing atmosphere from the away fans. Uh, other countries, they always seem to be so up for it and organised and loud and loved the Your Nightmare Returns banner. That's a, an iconic banner, isn't it? Um, yeah. This one's good. I was, I was 11 years old watching us on telly in Rotterdam, so I didn't really fully appreciate the size of the achievement um, back then. My fondest memory was the game against Atletico Madrid at home. We lost the tie, but the noise in the ground was something else. And that, and when Stan scored that perler, I mean, I've I've heard about this before. That the noise of the whole time when this goal went in. Were you there, Justin? I was there. Yeah, yeah. I, I've just I'm just sitting back and reminiscing and watching all these coming back. Uh, yeah, I mean the next one, that Stephen Perry one, was one of my highlights as well. Uh, along with uh, an earlier uh, an earlier time we played Milan when uh, Kent Nielsen scored an absolute thunderbolt. I think the roof came off the old end that night as well. So, so <laughs> many, so many memories. But that Phil King one, uh, Villa into what a game, 94-95, I, I would agree. Uh, I was actually in the lower 
which is now v- Villa uh, in the lower uh, north stand. That night, they, they, they didn't allow the uh, Inter fans behind the goal, which they did generally in league games. They pushed him into the corner and I sat right behind the goal when Phil King scored that winning penalty. So, fantastic, fantastic atmospheres, you know, it does feel different now, you know, even with all, you've got the away fans, the, the probably less of them are going to be coming to the away games, but they bring such a different vibe to English fans, you know, like you hear the Italians and the Germans, they're constantly singing all game, like in this sort of, uh, you know, like a really, it's like music constantly through the game, just like this, da, 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 all the way through mm-hmm. the games, and that just brings the best out of our fans as well, so... It's going to be incredible. It is, honestly. I think fans that haven't experienced European football at Villa are in for an absolute treat this season, hopefully. Yeah, it would be absolutely um, epic. There was one, but I can't. don't know where it's gone. They were actually at the game. Um, but I can't I can't figure out where the comment's gone. But, um, oh, here it is. This one. This one is fantastic. Uh, Andy, massive fan. For me, uh, it had to be winning the trophy. I was there in Rotterdam. Bayern Munich were the favourites, if I remember correctly. When Peter Wick scored that goal, the scenes were amazing. What a night. What a team and what a memory. I mean, it, it, if I'd get seen that, that does it? if I'd seen that, I'd probably never go to another Villa game ever again. Because yeah. you just can't ever top that. I mean, that would be absolutely amazing, but to say that you were there, I mean, that is just epic, isn't it's it? It's the iconic game, isn't it, of Villa's history? You know, and while we reminisce about it so much, you know, we spoke to Spinky on here. We spoke to Dennis, luckily enough to interview Dennis Mortimer on here, uh, and the vibe that they give off the run to to both to the final, uh, the games they played, um, the saves, the goals. You know, Villa Park rocking, just incredible times. You know, and. Yes, we're all hopeful we can go very deep into this competition and, you know, giving us more hope given what West Ham did last season. So, you know, we're all hoping we can get hopefully through the playoff, then into the groups, through the groups, and then into the knockouts and go deep into the knockout competition. Because you just imagine what it's going to be like next next Thursday when we play Hibs in a, in a knockout game, not even to get into the main draw. So you, you times that by however many you want in a quarter final, a semi final at <laughs> Villa Park. <laughs> you know, imagine the semi-final, second leg. We've got to win at home to get to the final of European yeah. competition. Just if the hairs on the back of your head doesn't stand up with that, then I'd just give up watching football, to be honest. Yeah, it would be incredible. I'm really looking forward. I mean, I remember like Europe last time. Obviously, I remember it, but I was probably like an early teenager, really. So, you know, mm. you, you love the Villa, but it, nothing like what you feel for the club now. So, you know, I can't wait to just walk up to that stadium next Thursday and just see it there and just the lights and whatever. So, yeah, fair play to that. Right. So, Hibs, what we always do, we're going to touch on Hibs. We're going to talk about Hibs a little bit. And then tomorrow we're going to have a predicted lineup tactical episode. So, we're going to have a look at how Hibs play, their threats, etc. We're going to have a look at some stuff from their previous games. So, if you want more in-depth analysis on how they play, come back tomorrow um, and we'll have the predicted lineup for that as well. So I watched Hibs's last two games, felt like I was doing a bit of a scouting episode um, when they played Lejeune, I think it was. Um, and it was very entertaining, to be fair. I mean, both teams were very open, I think. I'd say both teams could have gone through. I mean, that Lejeune, that, that many chances in the, in the I think it was the second leg, where the, their shots from distance were narrowly going wide. Uh, they played with a 4-4-2 Hibs, which is similar to our system. They've got our old mate, Lee Johnson, as manager. He'll be happy that the uh, away <laughs> fans still sit in the same position. So we've got two home ends. So he, he'll be happy when he walks into Villa Park. Uh, but he'll be happy when he sees it, there's no roof on the uh, dugout as well. He's going to get abuse. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, what, what do I think of them? They're, they're a good side, a decent side. I, I think if I've got to be brutally honest, I think Villa will win this quite comfortably over the two legs. I think it will be pretty comfortable. I think we'll have too much for them. I think if, if I look at the two styles... And I look at how Villa are going to have all of the possession. We're going to look to dominate the play. 
we're going to create chances. I think if we don't make too many changes which disrupt it completely, I think I think we'll we'll do pretty well. To be fair, um, they're quite direct at times. They've got a real decent winger. Um, I like their winger y Yuan. I think his name is. So he was very pacey in the last game. It was a massive threat in the second game, especially away from home. Uh, he's really good, sort of when he's finding space, when he's breaking through the lines. So he's one that we've got to watch out for. Uh, their left winger. Um, but all in all, uh, you know, you, you don't want to be too harsh and be like, like disrespectful, but. There is a there is a class gap between yeah. Hibs and Aston Villa, and I think we should dominate both games. And I just I just see us going through. I think I think any team on their day are a threat. I think if they look to sort of sit in and and try and hit us on the break a little bit, that may be their best chance to get some set pieces, corners, etc. But They've got that blue nose that plays for him as well. So I guess he'll, he'll be revved up a little bit. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I expect it to be, you know, quite a good atmosphere the first leg at Hibs. And I expect, you know, because I mean, this is pretty much one of the biggest games of their season already. You know, they're, yeah. they're not, they're not going to, they're not going to win the league. And, and this is a big game for Hibs. So I imagine that they're going to be bang, bang up for this. So, um, just like I was saying earlier about, you know, Villa's hard work last season, Hibs's hard work last season has put them in the position that they're in now to go against a Premier League opposition. So, yeah, difficult game, but I think we should have more than enough to win over two legs. What what, what are your thoughts on the, the whole tie? Yeah, I think um, looking at their squad, it's made up of sort of journeymen, you know, cheap signings, picking up, trying to pick up the odd bargain from here and there. I think they've got Adam Lafondre, who's like 36, been playing in, in, in Australia for a few years. The other lad up front's like 30. Um, you know, I think one of the centre-arts they picked up from Mansfield, last that played last season in Mansfield. So they have a feel of a sort of... I don't want to be too disrespectful because it can always bite you on the arse, but they have a feel like a lower, um, lower championship side, I think. Maybe even high end league one. Um, I mean, quality wise, that on paper, I know you don't play on paper, but we should have more than enough to see them off. Um, I think they did really well to get through. To be fair, in the last round, because I think Savet, it's uh, who they played again. I can't remember the team they played now. Like uh, Lejeune, I think. Lejeune, Lejeune. That's it, Lejeune. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, you know, they were of similar sort of standards, so it was a quite even game between those two, so it was almost toss of a coin. But, you know, for them, this is their final, I think. I think that's the way they'll be looking at it. If they can knock us out and get through to the to the knockout stage, it'll be great for their revenues and stuff like that. But it, it's going to be very difficult for them to see Villa off, I think. You know, we've got our eyes set firmly on very deep into the, this competition, so we should be looking to, to to comfortably win both legs. That's my feeling before we go in into both the games. I'd like to think we can go up there and win and then obviously win it back at Villa Park. So I think um, that's what um, the manager will be looking at as well and hopefully no more injuries. That would be even better, thanks. I don't want any more yeah. injuries. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we'll touch on a bit of transfer news. We are still rumoured with Luca Dean leaving to go to Nice. Um He's playing quite well, Luca Dean. Like he, he's playing quite well, but I, I understand. I feel like with the Luca Dean one, it's football and financial reasons. I, I, yeah. I get the deal. It feels like we are looking to upgrade, and we are looking to offload wages. Um, you know, he's a, a he's on a he's on an absolute wedge in Luca Dean. So I imagine that we're looking Isn't he the to trim, earner. Yeah, we're looking to trim that down. Um, Philogene looks like he might be going to Hull. Kevin Davis looks like he might be going to Hull. Archer still rumored to be leaving as well. So those are some of the some of the outgoings. Um, I still think Akuna's coming in. I know we were linked with that Traveres yesterday, but for me, I think it's I think it's Akuna. I think he's our sort of number one target in in that position. But you know, we had a couple of questions about Archer, like. What was what was your thoughts on Archie yesterday? And I, and I think I think the substitution 
spoke for itself that Duran came on first. Duran went up top, and I, I just, I just think we, I just think we're going to look to sell Archer. Um, really happy for Duran yesterday. Probably one of my favourite moments from yesterday was Duran getting his goal. I think if I had a camera on my face when he, when he was through, you know that willingness. I just wanted him to score so much, and when he scored. I was just like, I don't know, I was so happy for him because, you know, he's only 19, isn't he? He's, yeah. He, he's come from America. He's in the Premier League. He's probably got no family around him whatsoever. I know he spoke about he's got a girlfriend, so fair play. But, you know, to come here at that age and you've got no friends, no family probably, it's a big fit. It's a big thing for the kid and... I have seen glimpses in him, to be fair. You know, the Man City one. And I think the problem sort of with him around last season as well is it was quite serious towards the end of the season, wasn't it? You know, he was playing some really tough games like Liverpool, Spurs, Brighton. And those weren't the type of games to sort of take Watkins off and bring. But if we can keep doing well in the league now, and he keeps getting 20, 25 minutes. He's just going to grow so much because you want you. When I looked at the clock when he was coming on, and I saw he'd got like, I think he got like 18 minutes when he came on the pitch. I thought, you know what? That's a good amount of time for Duran now to get a to get a better look a look of him, and so we can yeah. really assess what he's like. And you know, there was some really good hold up play. Uh, he, he trapped back and won a tackle. You know the crowd were sh like was so happy and clapping when he ran back and won that tackle, and you know to get that goal, he sensed drive and you know really wanted that ball, and I, and I think that was some really really good signs. And yeah, okay, don't want to get carried away, you don't want to put pressure on him, but you know those little spells of seeing what he's all about, and if he can chip in and get some goals, and he's up and running already with one out of two games, so. Maybe if this season he could potentially end on 10, 8, 9, 10 goals. You know, it's that's a good return for a 19-year-old. So um really happy for him. And and I hope he I hope he can kick on and and, and have a really good season. Because you know, when you just like a player, you know, he smiles a lot and you're just warm to him. So yeah, he's my new little one where I'm like, <laughs> I really want him to like do well. Um, but yeah, do you want to add anything on the transfers um, or anything? Yeah, I mean, you, what we've got about 10 days left for the transfer window shuts and, you know, this European um, run now that we're embarking on has, th I suppose, thrown a little bit of a spanner in the work because we, normally now we'd have one game between now and, and when the transfer, and they could concentrate fully on on sorting the squad out because there is still quite a bit of work to do on that squad given the uh, the injuries we've incurred as well and it looks like one or two of the young lads are going to be moved on as well. Well, three of them, I think Ramsey, Archer, Bidace, um, and then a few squad players have still got to be moved on. We've still got to add three or four, I think, by the look of it, if those kind of players are going out. So there's a lot of plate spinning going on behind the scenes at Villa Park, I think, at the moment. I think Monchi's got his work cut out in the next 10 days, and the manager's got to obviously focus on these three games we've got. And he's also got to get, you know, have an input into what, what, what he wants to come in to make sure the squad's ready to go for this, you know, really long and arduous campaign on four fronts. So, yeah, I, I don't mind any of the sort of muted deals that are going on. You know, if Bidais doesn't, you know, I think I think somebody said today that, that you know, the manager's told him that he, he wants him to be a part of it, but he wants to play regularly. That's his, his prerogative, I suppose. So we'll just see see what goes on there. And then one or two of the other people come in and go in. We'll see what happens in the window. Luca Dean, massive wages. I think... Um, Moreno's first choice anyway, isn't he? So if he goes, that's fine. And we'll, we'll just see what happens next 10 days. It's a big, big 10 days for Villa. We've got to get through this next round, hopefully get a win at Turf Moor and sort the squad out. So uh, lots to talk about over the next week or so. Definitely. So we'll be back tomorrow for our predicted lineup, and we'll have a look at tactically how Hibs are going to set up, how they're going to play, what are their strengths, what have we got to watch out for. So... Really looking forward to it. European football is back, so let's enjoy it. Up the villa. Oh, score prediction. Up the villa. Oh. Score prediction. I'm going 3-0 Villa win. 
Yeah, I can't really see anything other than Villa win, so I will uh, go a 4 4 1 Villa win. <laughs> Love it. Right. Cheers, everyone. I'll speak to you all soon. Not the Villa. Not the Villa.